Hi and welcome to another video in the RHCE video series. Today's video is on system administration for security. So we're just essentially going to use uh, Manage Firewall D uh, as well as SE Linux using the An uh, Ansible modules well as much as we can with um, SE Linux particularly um, and we can use those modules to do a bit of administration on systems. So as always I launch a terminal okay so let's manage the firewall at first so firewall.yaml and do the usual stuff I did a video of the IM didn't I yep okay right triple dash Let's just do hosts all and let's go, let's go straight to tasks and let's kick this off. Okay, manage the firewall. I just put add the rule. Okay, yeah. Let's do add a new. I will rule. Okay, so first one I guess we set is the zone. So so if you don't set the zone, you will be basically public by default. Um, most likely it is the one you want, unless you're doing something a bit more complicated with your rules. But we can set it here. Let's just do public. But we could potentially set any of the zones they're available within the um then we set the ports so i'm just going to do 8443 and we can actually set a range here so 8444 let's slash tcp and then permanent we can say true or false let's say false for now so it won't be there forever um we're going to see state enabled so is it going to be removed or added um the interface we can set i won't set it in here but we can say if one or whatever interface we want to specify for the rule so you can only allow it from a certain interface potentially um you've got masquerading and that's just a, a yes or no option again that's completely optional that's that setting there um immediate This will be for the permanent rules. You say yes, and it immediately sets that rule. Um, otherwise, it you know waits for a restart of the service or reboot. We can set a timeout. If we set it as permanent force, we can actually set a timeout of um, I think it's in seconds. We'll soon find out. I set a timeout of five, and we'll see how long the rule lasts. And we can set a source. I think my network is two dot zero slash 24 i can soon soon test that out uh, so that will so we're going to add a public rule um on ports 8443 and 8444 uh, slash tcp uh, so obviously you can do udp rules as well um it's permanent it's not f um, permanent it's going to be enabled and it's got a timeout of five minutes and it's only going to be allowed from the, this source of 1002.0 so i just need to double check that's my network so so I have a network of 1002.7 slash 24 so it's going to be the same network there which is great so that means I've got that right at least um, the next thing to do would be to actually open that well at least run a listener in a new tab on that server 2.8 isn't it yep okay let's go in to set up a listener use netcat minus l and 8443 so that's now just create a, a port that's we can connect to uh, obviously without the firewall we won't be able we shouldn't be able to connect to it all being well with the firewall let's so go and see okay this no route to host when we test netcat is most likely the firewall blocking us so 
that's a good sign that the firewall is working as as expected so the next thing to do is actually just ansible playbook minus i and then firewall oh minus i inventory and then the firewall let's see what happens so it doesn't like i've set the zone and permanent okay let's go have a look at my um rule here so permanent is false oh but i've set a zone okay doesn't like let me just remove the zone because the temporary rule makes sense okay okay i'm getting an error message looks like i've made a some kind of error in here let's have a look <sighs> yeah i can see it I have to tell it to use firewall, right? I haven't even done that, so that's pretty much on me this one. So ansible dot posix dot firewall d and then we're gonna have to indent all this stuff. I prefer to let this do the indentation, yep. And we should be able to just get to the same place for all of it. And finally, hopefully we've got a bit more happiness now. Yep, that looks better. So it helps to call the module, I suppose. Okay, so we can see here that the this firewall module is pretty limited. So it doesn't like I am doing all of these at once. So let's remove the source. So as always, there's a bit of troubleshooting sometimes with these things. Let's rerun it again. Okay, so it's happy now. So it doesn't like the fact that I used a port um, as well as a source yeah it's obviously pretty limited this um config so we can only do what we can do so that should have added that so that that's still listening so if we do another netcat we should get connectivity now in theory oh it was only five seconds isn't it so it might be a bit too fast <laughs> Potentially, let's go set a timeout of 300, maybe. Might give you a bit more time. Got a connection refused this time. That looks in a way better. So what have I got here? I've got port four four three timeout. We've got stay enabled. We haven't set the zone, so it should be just allowed for port four four three. I'm listening on that root Ansible. Man, that's stupid. If I was listening in the right system, it would help massively. Hey, yes. <laughs> okay so yeah lots of uh, fun here so now i'm listening on the right system okay so the reason why it was refused is the file was no longer blocking but i'm not listening so there's nothing to connect to and now we've got a connection so that's working well so eventually that should that should eventually just time out so anyway we can override that rule now we can just say permanent equals true we remove the timeouts obviously we don't it doesn't like the source for this so state is enabled we can right quit we can then rerun the rule we've now got a permanent rule to then go and we've got connection refused 
because I've stopped listening. So start listening again. We got connected. Awesome. We can then remove the rule if we wanted to just by changing the state to disabled and rerunning the same. Now it's got add new, but it's not quite the same, but we should now get connection refused. Let's listen to that again. We've still got a connection. It's meant to be disabling the rule, so let's try absent to actually remove it. Ah, I haven't applied it immediately, have I? That's probably why. So let's do say disabled immediate yes. So we've got no route to host. That looks better. We re re listen again. And there we go, that's all it was. So because I hadn't set it to be immediate, as I mentioned earlier, this this setting is important when you have it as a permanent rule. You can say do you want to have immediate effect. So I obviously I hadn't made it of immediate effect and therefore it wasn't taking effect immediately. It makes total sense. Okay, the last one really um uh, we want to do is just an example one really. It's just to use uh, rich rules which you can use. Um, there's not really much to mention here, but uh, if you've used rituals before, it's just literally the same string um, you use and you can create more complex rules essentially than what we've got here. So we can keep these states um, and we can, we need a permanent. And we can add rule, service, name, equals, and then FTP. Audits, limit, value. accept so allow the rule and we want to say state enabled and we can run the same that's really all there is to it that's a pretty simple one and yeah there's not really too much to mention about that So this last one I want to cover is SE Linux. Um, there is obviously a lot to SE Linux. Um, from what I understand and from what I can find as well, there's um, there's no there's a module that you can ma manage SE Linux as such. You can move it from uh, permissive mode to enforcing mode or disabled mode or whatever. But beyond that, it's mostly um, sending the actual commands to the system so you could potentially run like a restore con or uh, au search or audit to allow whatever the various se linux commands you need to run um via the command line of ansible um or you could potentially deploy um the se modules uh, you can create the se module uh, the dot pp file and then use se module minus i so you you should you'd get the module file onto the system and then use se module to actually install install the module onto the system um so yeah i won't really go through that too much because it's it's um it'll be it's covered in stuff in the rh uh, rhcsa 
exam so um, I don't want to cover old ground essentially here so all I do is just cover the very quickly the um, SC Linux module um, and what you can and can't do <laughs> not very much at all to be perfectly honest uh, I'll just give you a, a couple of examples so I'll just copy the firewall to SE Linux YAML and just do a VIM on SE Linux. We'll change that to change SE Linux mode. And now it's going to be it's a POSIX one again. SE Linux, pretty straightforward there. And then we can say the policy. And we can set it as the targeted policy and then we have a state and as you may know there's a few states and we can set so it will be in um, enforcing mode right now I believe we'll just double check don't need that anymore so SE status and we can see it's enabled right now so what we do is we will set that to permissive and we'll then inventory and then se linux.yaml easy as that we can see the current mode it's enabled but it's in enforcing there and permissive there and you can see the current loaded policy name is targeted obviously there's multiple different policies you could potentially switch switch it to um, as required so let's just move it back to enforcing again obviously you could put disabled there um, as required so right quit and rerun that well that's really all I wanted to cover in this video um, thanks again for watching the next videos I'll be doing is the RHC exam videos thanks again for for watching this series um, catch the next one cheers um, right now I've just popped up on my sc on the screen uh, my T public page uh, that's for any kind of CSG merch if that's anything you're interested in uh, got my Kofi page um, for any kind donations um, if that's uh, something you're interested in um, yep and also just the details of my discord server so that's the best place to ask questions um, also we've got obviously you can ask questions in the comments and I'll try and um, help out where I can but discord place is a great place we've got a bit of a community going there and um, you can reach out to myself and also the community and someone will try and help you. Um, yeah, it's a great community we were building there. Well, thanks again and I'll see you at the next video. Cheers.